Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at headlines from our city, state and country. We take a look at your questions, comments and suggestions. We throw it all together in a mixing bowl, hoping that we can all come out of it with inspiration to enjoy our city, Puerto Vallarta, at its fullest as a community of English speaking locals. It is always a pleasure to see you, and today is no exception. Today is Saturday. It's March 5th, the end of another week, and the beginning of a restful weekend, at least for yours truly. I wonder what you guys are up to this weekend. I know that Kelly is having a lazy morning with a yawn and a stretch. I love that, and I think I'm going to have one of those tomorrow morning, but not today. Today is going to be a full working day. I'm going to be out and about with my cameras looking for trouble so if you have any place where, oh my goodness, look at that. It's Dr. Hartman. What on earth are you doing in San Miguel de Allende, my dear doctor? Uh, do let us know. Do let us know. You came to Puerto Vallarta. Here we go. I'm going to do a harump, although it's going to be a little crooked because my bad arm can't harump just yet. But you came and went. You came to Puerto Vallarta and... Uh, I would have loved to do an interview with you, my dear, and it didn't happen. Sniff, sniff. So let us know what you're doing in San Miguel de Allende and let us connect at some point. I hope you're well and you're being very successful. Um, here we go. We have news about COVID. We have news about the strike, the worker strike. And we have news about Donovan Carrillo, the Olympic ice skater from Guadalajara. We have... Um, what else do we have? Oh, we have, he's not quite, I don't know what to make of this one. He's not a lord. He's definitely not a lady. Uh, but uh, we found an interesting bit of news that I just think it's a little crazy. What is it? Well, let's get on with the broadcast. Well, for starters, it's Christmas time again in the national COVID map with one little tiny lonely exception, the state of Querétaro. The rest of the country is back in the green. This doesn't mean that we've conquered COVID. This just means that the risk level is low. Still, it's a lovely sight to behold. As we're getting closer to Semana Santa, we reported a few days ago that Jalisco health authorities do not anticipate that the upcoming vacation period will produce or will result in another wave of COVID cases. But just in case, you know what to do. The basic health-related mandates remain in place. So to quote RuPaul, don't fuck it up. <laughs> Seriously, folks, let us hope that this is the last wave of the pandemic let us hope that it's not going to come back. And we know that a lot of the reason it comes back, it's because we're not following the basic guidelines. And I find myself walking around the city increasingly so. And it's funny because when I'm doing my walking tours, I look at people walking towards me. And um, I play a little game inside my head thinking, okay, this person either looks like a local or this person looks like a tourist. And more often than not, when I'm looking at the videos that I share with you guys, you know, and I'm, I'm watching the video with you, I'm looking up, oh, tourist, mm, local, mm, tourist, tourist. And, and I come to the same realization, people that look like tourists, and I'm not saying Mexican or international, people that look like tourists out and about are the ones that are not following the guidelines. So please follow the guidelines so we can take care of ourselves. Now, given the inaccuracy of most local news outlets and their inability to present both sides of a story, it is difficult to take sides between this current strike that is going on um, by the workers of our government, Mayor Michel's administration or the workers' unions. It's difficult to tell who's right, who's wrong, who's the good guy, who's not the good guy. So rather than trying to understand who's right or who's wrong, we're going to focus on how this strike is affecting our daily lives. Workers 
have not only taken over City Hall and our main plaza, preventing access to those that need to reach the offices with, within for one reason or another, they have also created a traffic mayhem by blocking important intersections along Francisco Medina Asensio during peak hours and collapsing traffic for over for, for over five hours yesterday afternoon. This, of course, resulted in a number of tourists missing their flights and a number of Uber drivers making a killing with increased fares due to demand of users. Uh, both yesterday and the day before, a human chain of women took over the surroundings um, of City Hall, preventing access while negotiations took place between the workers' union and nice folks representing our nice mayor, who is clearly too nice to show himself when it comes to tough situations. A group of workers even decided to park themselves right outside of the mayor's residence. You think he came out to address their needs? Think again. And the worst part of it is that the situation is not over. The union leaders decided to take a break during the weekend, but anticipate uh, that disruptions will continue on Monday. So if you have places to be at specific times of day this coming Monday and maybe the next few days, just kindly plan accordingly so that you are not surprised with delays and whatnot. At the same time, if you have a place to be, you know, consider thinking about alternate routes so that your day will not go uninterrupted. And last but not least, if you have any business to conduct at city-related offices, uh, chances are that you will not be able to get it done until the situation is resolved. Monday is also the day in which the next stage of repairs along Manantial Street will begin. This is the street that goes towards Paso Ancho and beyond, and we know that this is the street that collapsed last year during high water current along the Rio Cuale when Hurricane Nora hit the region. Beginning on Monday, what is left of the concrete on the street will be demolished and the road will be lowered to facilitate the construction of a wall, a retainer wall, that will secure the ground moving forward. But more importantly is that the street will be closed at night so that workers can continue to do their work during the evening. This means, of course, that you shouldn't consider giving birth in the evening or developing uh, symptoms for an appendectomy because if you live out there, only God knows how you're going to get to the city if you have an emergency. Let us hope that it doesn't come to that, but uh, definitely keep this in mind if you need to get from there and back in the next few days. I mean, it's a good thing that they're, that they're fixing the street, but of course, you know, some compromises need to be taken when this is happening. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's time for the weather. My goodness, we're going quite fast this time around. Let's take a look at the weather. <laughs> the sun is a totally overrated clown. I don't think so. I actually think the sun is quite lovely, especially on a day like today. Oh, my goodness. Look at the humidity. It's only 37 percent, continues to be so low. It's wonderful. 22 degrees right now, and our temperature in Fahrenheit is 71. So it looks like a lovely day today. Our forecast calls for a clear day with a high temperature of 30, uh, low temperature of 17. Uh, Sunday, uh, tomorrow, it's going to be a clear day with a high temperature of 31 and a low temperature of 16. And Monday, our temperature will be a high of 30 and a low of 15, and we will have a clear day on Monday. Oh, actually, I didn't mean to put on that screen. I figured it is time for us to use this screen. We haven't played this game in three months, so I think it's a good time to play this game again so that we can continue collecting all these things that we think we should be doing, um, uh, we should be doing so that we can actually call ourselves English speaking locals. So kindly, kindly share some of your suggestions in your comments, and we'll get to your comments after a couple of other headlines that I want to show you. Um, 
along those lines, I forgot to mention what I usually mention. If you have something truly important to say, uh, it helps a great deal if you add a letter Q. Although I see some comments that don't have a Q, but they're pushing my buttons anyway. We'll get to that um, in a second. But first, I want to give you some good news. Our governor, Governor Alfaro, met with Olympian ice skater Donovan Carrillo, and our governor expressed admiration for the young athlete, athlete vowing to find resources for him to continue his training in our state. A little bit of context here. Remember that Donovan Carrillo started training at a shopping center in Guadalajara, not at an officially sized ice skating rink when the shopping center closed. He had no choice along with his trainer to find a new training ground in Guanajuato uh, where his trainer found a work at another ice skating rink at another shopping center. So that's how his career came about. He of course came back from the from the Olympics and the federal government has a scholarship system such that if you win these many medals, you get this much money. But of course, I think Donovan Carrillos' case is rather exceptional as he's the only professional ice skater in the country. So our governor, and I'm going to quote a little bit of this article because we want to make sure that this happens. Our, color, our governor said, Jalisco needs to get things in order and with somebody that represents us in the world. And we have agreed that we're going to generate aid, a support for, or a fund for his preparations that we're going to help him and his trainer who did a great job. Uh, we're going to put his trainer on a salary with the government of Jalisco, and we're going to try to develop a way to, um, to back him up so that he can continue developing as an athlete. Um, in response, Donovan Carrillo said, thank you very much, Governor. For me, it's a pleasure to be back at home with all the Jalisco family. And I want to thank you and the government of Jalisco for all the support and the preparation that is going to be required for the games at Milan in 2026. I am sure that with all this team, along with my trainer, Gregorio Nunez, we are going to generate a good synergy that is going to continue to help us uh, promote the name of Jalisco. Isn't that nice? And this didn't cost millions of millions and billions of pesos like they decided to spend on the helmet of uh, of the racing car dude. I forget his name right now, but it is, it is what it is. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, this one caught my attention. This I thought this was a weird announcement by the government. The government says, the government of Jalisco says, if you're going to a place where you are you are expected to present your, your vaccination certificate in order to enter, keep in mind that you should only show it. Nobody should hold on to your vaccination certificate in order for you to gain access to a venue. Now, I have not actually heard of this happening anywhere. But if the government is issuing this statement, it must be it must be because of something happening. So all I'm saying here is if you get to a business, if you get to a venue where they say, well, we want your certificate, don't give it away. It's not for them to hold on to. It's just for you to show. And that is basically it. I would suspect that somebody out there must be doing something, holding on to these certificates and then trying to sell them for other people to use. Not nice. Next, I want to do a shameless plug for my dear friend, Cassandra Shaw. She doesn't even know that I'm doing this, but she's my friend and I adore her. Um, she is the featured artist of the week at uh, the studios at Culture. As you know, Culture is a very popular gathering spot in Colonia Emiliano Zapata. It is a restaurant, it is a bar. But more importantly, it is also a place where a limited number of local artists have their own studios and they create art there and they, of course, sell their art there. So if you're planning on visiting culture sometime this week, keep in mind that Cassandra Shaw um, is, uh, is a featured artist. 
Uh, Culture features happy hour from 4 to 7 all day long. Uh, not from 4 to 7 all days of the week, not all day long. See, I cannot even read. And the last bit of news that I have before we get into your comments, I don't know whether to laugh or not to laugh about this one, but apparently this young man, and I know that he was a male because in Spanish we have um, pronouns that um, are gender specific. A young man was taking a flight from Puerto Vallarta to Guadalajara. It's just a 40 minute flight. But right as the plane um, was about to leave from our, our airport, he decided that the temperature in the cabin was too uh, warm. He said, it's too hot for me, so I cannot fly this way. Please let me get off the plane. And just like that, he was let off the plane, but he managed to delay the plane for uh, 40 minutes. Why am I sharing this? I have no idea, but I just thought it's weird. I mean, if you're going to go on a plane and it's only going to be 40 minutes and you're going to go to Guadalajara, I mean, how warm could it have been in the plane cockpit for this dude to say, I want to get off the plane? Well, we don't know the whole story. So what can I say? But I wouldn't call him a lord. I just wanted to show that with share that with you because I, th I thought it was really weird. The end. Okay, maybe that deserves one of these before we get to your comments. And let's not forget that we're also looking for specific comments of things that you think we should all do to call ourselves locals. So let's take a quick look at your comments lots of good mornings which i always appreciate and i know i sound like a broken record but it is so nice when we take time to say good morning good afternoon or good evening when we're out and about we always say buenos dias or buen dia or buenas tardes and i love it that you guys and gals do the same thing here uh let's see what we have Mihal, you make me jealous because you are at Villa del Palmar, but maybe I'll crash you in your pool, so there. Uh, Jenny and I have same colored shirts today, yay. Uh, Mark tells us that he's doing a No Coward Cole Porter concert at the Bellas Artes. I'll be back in Puerto Vallarta in April. Let's schedule an interview. Okay, I'm holding you to that. And hopefully you'll bring your No Coward Cole Porter program to Puerto Vallarta. I'm sure it'll be a wonderful performance. <clears throat> Michael is sad for the people that blocked the highway to the airport and a lot of people missed their flights. Again, there's been a lot of pressure from the restaurant community, not the restaurant community, the business community in Puerto Vallarta towards the government saying, hey, you guys, you know, this is really bad for us as a tourism destination, people losing flights. It sends a wrong message. But again, it's difficult for me to tell uh, who's right and who's wrong. I mean, the government is sending all these scathing statements, publishing scathing statements about the union leaders, and the union leaders are publishing scathing statements about the government. So we don't really know who's the good guy or the bad guy here. Uh, let's see what else we have. Rod uh, shares my thoughts about who follows and doesn't follow the guidelines. I don't mean to shame tourists, but I do notice that there are people out there that are not following the guidelines. Uh, Barbara reports on an early dinner at the New Bonito Kitchen and uh, going this afternoon to the New Art Museum and then on to Red Cabbage for dinner. That sounds like a great combo. Congratulations. Do, 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 do. Ramon keeps his heart in Puerto Vallarta, and we love you for that. Um, ooh. Harold says, newspaper writers don't get paid for their stories until they are submitted. Therefore, they sometimes make up the endings of an event, even if they don't have all the facts, so they will get paid. Harold you push my buttons in the worst way. Uh, do confirm to us that you are a writer, a journalist, that you work for a paper, that you own a paper, or you have somehow the authority 
or the knowledge and expertise to make such a blanket statement. Um, because that is a huge, big statement. So I hope you sure have some awesome credentials to drop that bomb in our comments today. Oh, and then Harold adds, the ones who work for Mexican newspapers. So Harold, please prove yourself worthy of making a statement that big. Otherwise, you'll get Luna's wrath today. Thank you. Uh, let's see what else we have. Mario had an awesome breakfast at Poblanos this morning. Love the atmosphere. That's awesome. There was a really sexy waiter working there. He's no longer there. That makes me a little sad, but Poblanos is wonderful nonetheless. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, oh, I see what um, now I'm understanding. I, okay, I'm sorry. You guys are filling the comment. You are not an English-speaking local until you have bought your weekly pastries from a woman who comes by with her wheelbarrow. I like that. There's a lady that comes by my house every afternoon and she goes, empanadas, empanadas de leche. You are not an English-speaking local until you have played the Kuala River Bridge Completion Lottery. <laughs> I like that. Uh, you are not an English-speaking local until your friends who are Mex Mexican nationals and you spend time with them at their houses with the entire family. That's a good one, Karen. I love it. Or shop and eat in Pitiyal to be a local. I love it. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Mexican nationals as friends and family enjoying time and food together. See, I like that one. Uh... Veronica, who went over and visited uh, uh, blah, 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 Boca de Tomates yesterday. How was your lunch? I want to know. I forget if it was yesterday or the day before, but Veronica, I know that you were going to go to Boca de Tomates. Please let us know. Anyhow, Veronica says, bought fish and shrimp from a pickup truck, berries out of a wheelbarrow, and desserts out of a trunk of a car. Love it all. And this is true. In our neighborhood, there's all these people that come by selling tchotchkes and you know it's funny because you, we don't know where these things were cooked or prepared and still we buy them so we're still alive it's got to be a good thing oh nasty but true <laughs> ray says you're not an english speaking local until you use the toilet without a seat that deserves one of these i love it mary says you're not a local until you eat, eat fish on a stick on the beach um, oh, Logan is adulting. You're not an English-speaking local until you measure the center of your universe as Plaza Caracol rather than Playa Los Muertos. That is a good one. I love it. Uh, let's see. You're not an English-speaking lo uh, speaking local until you have shopped at one of the municipal markets. That's a given. That is a given. Uh, let's see. Da -di -da -di -da 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 -da. Oh, ba -ba. Harold makes a suggestion. Don't accept help from someone who offers a, to clean a stain off your clothes. They are part of a team which steals your wallet. This is very true. A common exercise at supermarkets. Um, Catherine says that sounds more like an anxiety panic attack in regards to the flight to Guadalajara. I thought that as well, but... I suppose, again, I'm not going to judge this guy or be harsh on him, but, you know, if I'm prone to panic attacks, maybe I don't think about riding a plane after all, uh, or to begin with, rather. Let's see what else. Do, do, do. Linda says, as we pull our winter to a close and totally understanding your choice of declining, getting together, just wanted to let you know that I gave the Paco Butterfingers and Coffee Crisp chocolate bars to the kids on the beach. They love their treats wonderfully. Wonderful. That's great, Linda. And please don't hold it against me if I don't go out and meet everyone. I wonder when was the last time that you went out to meet a perfect stranger on your own. But we are going to start 
having little get-togethers. At least I hope we will have a nice little get-together once the new whiskey kitchen is opened. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sheila, walk the same walk that we did. It was fun to see the shops and restaurants that, that we pointed out. That is wonderful. Um, let's see what else is going on. Um, Harold defends himself by saying, I have friends who are newspaper writers who say they don't get paid until their story is submitted. Okay, Harold, I appreciate that. But between, there's a huge difference between saying that and saying newspapers in Mexico and being generic. You know, as somebody that works or has worked in journalism for many years, I do take issue with your statement. And I do wish that all of us were not as prone to making blanket statements that are not well grounded as we sometimes are. So we agree to disagree. Uh, let's see. <laughs> You're not an English speaking local until you have bought the tacos from your next door neighbor's mother. I love it. That's specific, but it's very common. Uh, you're not a local until you've learned not to stop at stop signs in the colonias. Uh, the, seriously, we're so, we're all supposed to use the stop signs, but unfortunately, you're right. A lot of locals don't regard the stop signs, so it's a it's it's a different experience as being a pedestrian in other countries. That's for sure. Uh, Javier says, "I live in the marina. The best way to Boca de Tomates is to walk from Boca Negra." Uh, where is Boca Negra? Uh, is Boca Negra the axis, the, the final axis to the beach at Marina Vallarta? I, I have to look at Boca Negra on my map because now I'm, I'm curious about this. Um, and Bronica reports that they went to Boca de Tomates and that it was wonderful. I am so glad you enjoyed yourselves. It's a totally rustic experience but it is a wonderful experience nonetheless. Thank you very much for your comments today. Thank you very much for your suggestions. And as always, thank you very much for supporting Coffee and Headlines uh, in any way you can, from just spreading the good word to being an occasional coffee buyer to being a monthly or annual subscriber. It all means the world to Luna and I. And uh, thank you before we leave. Thank you very much to, for clarifying that, Javier. I have intention of doing that walk in the next uh, few days. I wonder how long it takes. You may know the answer to this question. How long does it take to walk from uh, Boca Negra to Boca de Tomates? If you know the answer, I would love to see it um, while we are saying goodbye. Today is Saturday. Tomorrow we won't be broadcast, as you know. We won't be broadcasting, uh, but we will be back on Monday with more news, more headlines, more stories, more commentary. So between now and then, I hope you have an amazing weekend and I hope um, you'll come back to join us next week. So there we go. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you again Monday. <laughs>